it's it's quite something to see that we cannot possibly know what's coming. So or, ordinary human kind of orienting to things is to try to get some sense of security about like, how's it going to be, right? Is it going mm -hmm. to be okay? Am I gonna get what I want? Am I gonna realize the things I want? Um, is this person I'm in a relationship with someone, are they gonna, is there security there? Are they gonna stay? Is it this relationship gonna continue? I mean, on and on and on, right? I have health now, is that gonna continue? And, yeah. and then we're living with this stark uh, reality, not stark, but just reality that the future's, the next instant is just wholly unpredictable, right? Mm -hmm. There is, in, in that sense, there is no, there, there is no future. There's certainly not any knowable future, but there's literally like, there's, that, that what we're actually, what we're actually searching for by trying to secure a certain kind of future is already here as this very instant. So this moment, right now, the only moment we could ever have, the only instant is the security, right? This is the freedom now. Yeah, we have this natural instinct for certainty and security and knowability and control and predictability. And it's amazing to see again and again and again how those things aren't possible. And as, but as we kind of just rest in what's here now, we begin to realize that that that, that this is, that we can always rest right here. We can always rest right here in this incredible ground, this incredible being, this incredible stability of reality, just as it is. And which doesn't preclude our wanting things to happen in the future. Like that can still be there. Aspiring to bring certain things forth or, right? That can be there as well. It's part of this very interesting dance of the, the transcendent and the human in a way, you know? Because the, the human wants things, the human desires things, the human needs things in a sense, right? The, the forms that we are, even at the most basic level, right? Food and shelter and connection and just things that seem like natural desires, natural wants, natural needs, if you want to call them that. Um, and if, if those things seem to be missing, there's a natural inclination to want to bring those into our life in some way. And then simultaneously, we are the whole itself. We are whole, wholeness itself. There's nothing missing. There's nothing that this moment is enough as it is. Like nothing else has to happen because we are the very thing again that we're seeking we're the freedom we're the love we're the wholeness we're the satisfaction the the nourishment that, we, that is we are made of that we're made of divinity we're made of the cosmos we are the cosmos and uh, we feel ourselves simultaneously as the, these creatures that have wants and needs and desires. And so it's very, it's very interesting to feel ourselves in both of those worlds simultaneously. A wild ride, isn't it? <laughs> it's a wild fucking ride. <laughs>
you know, and I was thinking about watching my dad go through his, his old age and then passing and wishing I could give him that other perspective because it seems so difficult for him to, you know, in a sense, be wanting something other than what was happening. You know, it was just painful to watch that. And, but I also was sort of looking, going like, wow, I have no idea what that will be like for me, you know, when I go through that part of my life, of the end of my life. Um, I'll find out, I guess, you know, what, what, what perspectives I, uh, that seem accessible or not accessible, more or less accessible. Um, what I have found over now some period of time is that exploring, you know, I'm just emphasizing this transcendental perspective, like, you know, like a broken record, as you all know, who have been hanging out with me. Um, and I, when I say perspective, I obviously am talking about something that's experienced, not just thought about conceptually. Um, but the more we familiarize ourselves with that perspective and know it to be there, uh, the kind of basis of all experience, it's 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 more it's easier and easier to access that as a perspective. Um, I just wrote this the other day. I was just going to pull this up um, about this. I said, discovering the transcendental, indefinable nature of this, the nature of experience, allows us to approach the moments of our lives, all the experiences and circumstances, from this entirely different vantage point, which turns out to be of greatest benefit and advantage from a human standpoint. And yeah, there's moments where you'll just feel like you're underwater and like it feels like, fuck, I just can't seem to access that other vantage point. And then that's, then that becomes in that moment, that's what is, right? That, that, oh, wow, I just, I can't seem to find my way clear of this. It seems just so overwhelming or so difficult or so challenging and, um, But that, the invitation that, that I'm offering you again and again and again is if you find yourselves with the wherewithal to, to feel into all of it, to feel the presence of all of it, that nothing needs to be rejected, that everything can be welcomed, um, everything is already in a sense being welcomed. This is realities, right? It's like, um, <clears throat> It can be helpful to, particularly when the shit feels like it's hitting the fan, to feel the way in which reality itself is already completely open to that experience and welcoming it. Because that experience is, like if, to use Matt's example, like from the impersonal perspective, if you will, the, the transcendental perspective, it wasn't Matt, the individual human, having a broken femur. It was reality having a broken femur. It was the cosmos having what we call a broken femur. And that, again, that other perspective may not always be seem to be accessible, but I think you'll find it's increasingly one that you can draw upon the more you familiarize yourself with it, that, that our greatest disappointments are the flow of reality. Our greatest heartbreaks are the flow of reality. Our greatest challenges are the flow of reality. And um, not, not to minimize the challenge that that can be from a human perspective. I would never, I would never say that. Like it's almost like a corny thing. Like uh, I think there's even a book by this title, something like "The Universe Has Your Back." I think that's the title of the book. It sounds kind of corny and new agey or whatever, self-helpy, 
but it's actually at some very real level, the absolute truth. Like the universe is your back. The cosmos is your back. The cosmos is what you are supporting. It's the ultimate support, isn't it? If you want to call it that. If you want to think of the ocean supporting the waves, <laughs> the ocean of existence, it's really just being the waves. But in that in that sense, it's like, the universe doesn't just have your back. The universe is your back. <laughs> the universe is listening <laughs> right now. The universe is sitting here. The universe is experiencing experience, including broken femurs and broken hearts. And I mean, literally, actually, not just poetically. I mean, what's sitting here right now? Life is sitting here, right? I mean, can you feel some point? I mean, you might say I'm sitting here, but what are you? What is the end of you? Do you have an end? Do you have an edge? Do you have a, a demarcation point? Or is this infinity sitting here? Edgeless. We're just thinking about the title of... Uh, I never really got very into reading Krishnamurti, but I, I, I'd never found it very accessible myself. I, I don't know if I'd experience it differently now, but that was years ago. But I think one of the titles of one of his books was Freedom from the Known. And I was just, that, 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 I, that sense of that just was coming to me, the freedom from the known. Freedom from all ideas about what this is. Because all the ideas put limits, don't they? That's the nature of an idea, is it puts a limit around what it is. That's what a definition does. Here's what it is. It defines the parameters of it. It puts a limit around it, which is the function of a definition, is to set the limits of that phenomena. In other words, this is what it is. It's not something else. It's this. That, that's what I mean by puts the limits around it. But if this is fundamentally indefinable, it's fundamentally unlimited. It has no limits. It's unlimited and, and just feel it's freedom, isn't it? It's freedom from language, freedom from concepts, even while language and concepts, I mean, I'm talking, there's words, there's concepts, but what this is, is entirely free of all of my words and my concepts. They can't touch it. I cannot touch this with my words and concepts, nor can any of us. And there's a great freedom in that, isn't there? It's unbounded. It's, it's uncontainable. It's 